In this video, I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of different ways you can get organized inside of Final Cut Pro. Here in the viewer, it's easy to have hundreds or even thousands of different clips, and maybe you only wanna see the media that you have not yet used. Well, at any time, you can always come up here to the top and click on this button that says hide rejected, or it might say all clips, something along those lines, and change it over to unused. So now if there's an entire clip or even just a specific part of a clip that has not yet been used, that is going to appear here in your viewer, making it that much easier to make decisions if you should add it to your video. Another super powerful way to get organized with Final Cut Pro is of course, smart collections. I feel like a lot of people don't really touch these, but there's so much depth to them. Now, before I even create an entirely new smart collection, you can actually come over here to the left side and you'll see that Final Cut Pro always creates smart collections by default with every new library. So if I expand this out, you can actually sort to see only just the video clips only just the audio clips, any favorites you might've had, which I don't have for this, or just the projects you've created. You can even have just the still images that you've imported, which I have not imported any. So that in and of itself is super powerful with smart collections. But at any time, if you wanna create a new smart collection, you can come up here to the top right corner of the search and select this. That's going to create this new little window here where you can create your own smart collections. Now by default, it's always going to do text and you could type in anything you want for text. But what a lot of people don't touch is this little add button in the top right corner. And I feel like this is where the real power of smart collections is. I can go ahead and add in a new filter and there's so many different options here. One option that I use all the time is if we select format info and then we change it from real over to video frame rate, now I can sort out all the various frame rates that I have inside of my video. So let's say that I only want a smart collection with frame rates that are 25 frames per second. Now we can just select new library smart collection and let's just 25. FPS. At a moment's notice, I can select this smart collection and know that all of the clips inside of this bin are 25 frames per second. And it's going to automatically update as I import more footage into Final Cut Pro. Another incredibly powerful way to organize your footage inside of Final Cut Pro is to change how you are grouping by or sorting by. This particular feature actually trips up a lot of people, so I just wanted to make you all aware of it. You can see here inside of my media that we have everything sorted by January 31st, 2025, that's here at the top, and then there's also a January 1st, 2025. At any time, I could just right click and change the group clips by, by any one of these values. So say for example, we wanna change it by when the media was imported, I can do that and now they are all grouped up by their import dates. Now what you need to realize is that grouping by is different than sorting by because we can actually sort these clips by name within their contained groups. What I mean by that is let's right click and you'll see that underneath group clips by is sort by. So we can change this to be when it was created or maybe by name, take or duration. So let's go ahead and sort these by name. And now they are all inside of those groups while also being sorted by name. And this is what trips people up so much because sometimes it'll be sorting by what kind of camera was shot or when the footage was imported and it really makes Final Cut Pro look chaotic. But if you change these settings up front, it's gonna make your life so much easier. This next tip is one that I love and use all the time. In fact, you might even say it's one of my favorite tips. If we come up to the top right, you can change this over to list view. You don't have to be in list view. I just find that it's a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and select our top clip. And many people are aware that you can favorite by selecting a clip and pushing F. And now we have this green line indicating that that entire clip has been favorited. But what some people don't know is that you can favorite multiple sections of a specific video. So let's go ahead and select another clip here. And I'm going to click and drag to create my in and out points and I could push F. But if I were to push and hold command while clicking and dragging again, you'll notice now that I have two different selections here on the same clip. And this is super handy because we can favorite these at the same time. So I'm just gonna push F and now I have two favorited sections from the same clip. And another huge benefit with this, especially inside of list view, 
is if we take a look down here, you'll notice that I have this little arrow icon next to the clip. I'll go ahead and expand that out. And now we can see each of the different favorites that I've created, which allows us to click to them to get to them very, very quickly. This also ties into another powerful organization tip, which is keyword collections. A lot of people are aware of keyword collections. They do automatically import if you bring in a folder into Final Cut Pro. But if you want a super fast way of keywording your various clips inside of Final Cut, let's go ahead and select a clip and push Command K. That's going to bring up this window, which is the keyword collection window. And it shows us the various shortcuts we can have for our keywords. If you don't see this, you can expand that out with that arrow. So you'll see in window number one, we could call this landscape. Maybe window number two is ocean. Keyword collection number three is maybe sky, so on and so forth. You could have these be whatever you want them to be. But you'll notice to the left, we can push control one, two, or three, so on and so forth, all the way up to control zero to remove all the keywords. So now I can go through and select a clip and I'm gonna push control one. And now that clip you'll notice here at the top has added this blue line, which has now thrown it into the landscape keyword collection. Let's say this is ocean. So I'm gonna push control two, so on and so forth until you get all of your clips keyworded in the way that you want them to be. And finally, the last three options are gonna be on the bit more technical side of things. One is maybe you've imported your media and you've discovered that it has the wrong dates associated with it. So let's say that the last four clips in this are on the wrong dates. Well, we'll just come on up to modify and now we can select adjust content created date and time. And now I can set this to any date that I like making it that much more organized in the future. So maybe this was on December 31st of 2024 and maybe it was at 3.57 in the morning. We can even see how much time is changing down here at the bottom, which is just a nice little addition. We can also change the file creation dates. So by default, it's changing the date modified, but by changing the date created file, that organizes things in a whole different way. Now that we've done that, if we go on up to our film strip, we can change the group by over to content created. And you'll notice that we now have this December 31st, 2024, as well as this January 31st, 2025. Another super powerful way to stay organized in Final Cut Pro is with metadata. At any time I could select a clip and then we can jump on over here into the info inspector. By default, it's gonna be in this basic mode. So we can see a few things like notes, video roles, the name, so on and so forth. But if we come to the bottom and change this over to something like extended, we now get a whole lot more information that we can change around. For example, I could change the reel. So let's go ahead and set that to be, it's reel two, it was scene 47. And if you wanted to get super technical with each shot, you could change the take number. So this was take 13 maybe. We could change this to camera angle A and we could even have in a camera name of bro cam. But what's powerful about this is because you can use this in tandem with smart collections like I showed earlier, or you can use them powerfully to mass rename clips inside of Final Cut Pro, which I'll show you in just a second. But first, if we come down here, you can see that it's set to extended and we can actually click this and select add custom metadata field. So now we could have this be whatever we want it to be. So we'll just have it say subscribed question mark and we could push okay. Now we could go in and type in yes, exclamation mark. And so that metadata has been added to this clip inside of Final Cut Pro, but you can also reorganize where this metadata is. So we could click and drag this all the way up here to be above the camera LUT. And just like that, we have easier access to that subscribed metadata. And that brings me on to my last tip and that is mass renaming. We have all of these clips which have crazy names because I just downloaded them off of Envato Elements. I'm gonna select all of these clips and then go up to modify and then select apply custom name. Coming over here, we can see by default, we can select the clip date and time, custom name with counter, original name from camera, scene shot, take angle. And if I select one of these, 
you'll notice how it's renamed it based off the metadata that I provided over here on the right side. So we only have this one single clip that I added any metadata to, but we can very easily see how it's been renamed. Now, maybe that's not what I want. Maybe I want different information. So I'll select all of these modify, apply custom name, and we can actually create our own naming convention. So we can press new and by default, it adds in current name. Let's just delete that. Maybe at first we wanted to have a custom name and I'm going to add in a space just for a little clarity sake. Then we'll add in a counter, which will automatically update with each individual clip. One, two, three, four, five, six, so on and so forth. Maybe we want it to say what the camera angle is. And finally, maybe we want it to say the current date. We can get a nice little preview here of how everything's going to look. And if we really wanted to make it special, we could add in an emoji with control command space. And let's just add in a nice little heart here. Then at the bottom, we could change the custom name. So let's go ahead and set this to subscribed and then we'll push OK. So now that we've created that naming convention, we can always go up to modify, apply custom name, and then select untitled. I forgot to rename it, but you can see how that name has been applied onto every single clip. So we can sort these by name. You can see how they are counting up by number, which is really handy. Tons and tons of power when it comes to organizing inside of Final Cut Pro. If this video was helpful to you, consider press that like button as it does help tremendously. And you absolutely need to check out this video where I show you some keyboard shortcuts in Final Cut Pro, which will 10X your editing speed. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.